We like to keep subverting your expectations and that applies to the mechanics, it applies to the story, it applies to the tone, it applies to the environments that you get to experience. That applies to the music as well. I liked game music before I liked all music, really. My name's Matthew Chesney, I'm the composer and sound designer on Tin Hearts. There was a heavy narrative focus in the game, which obviously the music needs to play a big part in. And there's a distinctive setting and distinctive gameplay as well. All these things need to be complemented with the music. I made the decision to avoid being very kind of um, of the time period. So there's a lot of electronics in the score, all guitars, all sorts. Because there's a big trajectory over the four acts of the game, a lot of changes, the music needs to change with that. So that's why the music isn't strictly following a template of the time period. So the first sections of the game that take place in the attic in the house, the instrumentation, the music's very warm with traditional instruments, so strings, piano. And then as we move into the basement, we move away from the piano and now we've got metallic instruments. As electricity comes into the fold of the gameplay, we get electronic instruments. And then towards the end of the game, there's a big narrative moments, and then that's when we enter like the orchestral, because you, you've got to go big for the big moments. Because the player can control the speed of the gameplay, they can pause, rewind, fast forward time the music has to account for any possible speed the player could be running the game at. Say the player is someone who freezes time, quite methodical, they think about it, they work out the puzzle and then they let time run and let it all play out. That person, I never wanted the music to feel like it's prodding them in the back, trying to pressure them to do something. On the opposite end, if there's someone who plays more off the cuff, they just start the puzzle, let things happen and work it out from trial and error music needed to still be engaging for that type of player. So that's the main consideration of the music in regard to the gameplay. In early versions of the game, when you pause time, we would kind of drop the music, but because some players are very frequently playing and unpausing, pausing, unpausing, that became pretty aggravating with music changes, so um, we moved away from that. So the music's just kind of not reacting every single moment of the gameplay, but more trying to complement each play style as best as it can. There's a sequence where you see a character of Helen playing the violin, which is playing the main theme of the game, which is woven in through the music across every, almost every level in some form. So there's a musical history that you're experiencing even before that point. In this level, you're seeing how important music was to the family. Helen, uh, Albert's wife, she's a musician, and the you know the dynamic between them is very interesting because he's creative in certain ways, she's creative in other ways, and the story we're, we're telling there is that they're souls that have been brought together for very specific reasons. Um, the soundtrack itself kind of tells that story of you know who these characters are. For the composition, it was a case of integrating the cutscenes, the memories that you're seeing of the family playing the music and making that work seamlessly with the gameplay music moving between the cutscenes and the gameplay seamlessly as possible, which was a challenge. That's one of our favourite uh, levels for sure. The puzzle is about the music, uh, the environment is about the music. So to solve the puzzle in the level, three instruments have to be interacted with using the soldiers. The first is the glockenspiel or, or xylophone. The second is the harp and in the last sequence we have the accordion. As you activate each instrument it gets added to the gameplay music, it gives a sense of progression to the player as they move through the level. We've got a great harpist on the score, her name's Amy Turk and it's all recorded remotely. Musicians from all over the world and it's the case of sending them the parts and then they do their magic and make me sound like I know what I'm doing. Usually first time they nail it and we stick in the game. <laughs> Matt's done a fantastic job, not just with the composition of the music, but actually the sound design as well, which is a completely different set of skills and just kind of seeing how he's brought these two skills together so expertly. There's a lot of tiny sounds, squeaks and rattles and uh, really small objects like pen lids, small bits of wood and just knocking them about, trying to make sound that'll be suitable, using all those different elements to kind of build the soundscape. Uh, and the difference it makes to the game, you know, it's it's always an experience. We say this level's had a mad pass, and <laughs> basically what that usually means is like, oh, it's 300% better <laughs> than the last time I played it, just because, yeah, Matt's done a, a new sound sound effect pass or a, or a music pass, and uh, yeah, it just brings everything together. <laughs> <laughs>